उम्र क्या है लड़के की कोई बारह साल का होगा सुधरोगे नहीं तुम लोग पहले खुद गलत करते हो बाद में रोते हो बच्चों से काम कराना गैर कानूनी है मैडम हम अपने बेटे से काम नहीं कराऊंगा तो किससे कराऊंगा स्कूल भेजो बच्चे को पढ़ाओ लिखाओ बच्चा बड़ा हो गया कुछ बने मैडम धंधा बहुत मंदा चल रहा था पैसे की बहुत जरूरत थी बाल मजदूर है ना उनका ज्यादा अपहरण होता है तेरा केस भी वैसा ही कुछ लग रहा है एग्जैक्ट तारीख बताओ जिस दिन गायब हुआ था दो हफ्ते पहले की बात है नाम क्या तुम्हारा महेंद्र सैनी लड़के का नाम सिद्धार्थ कुमार सैनी Hi, I'm Lulu. I'm Armand, and we're here from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press. Here with Richie Mehta. So, Richie, yesterday we heard the story of Siddharth came to you. Could you tell us that story again? Sure. Um, so, I was uh, working on a film in India uh, in 2010, and that film got cancelled. It was a Disney project, and so I was kind of stuck in India because the volcano incident had happened in Iceland, and I couldn't get a flight out. And I ended up running into this rickshaw driver. It's like a taxi cab driver uh, in Delhi, and um, he ended up asking me uh, if I knew where Dongri was. And I said, I don't know what that is. We were speaking in Hindi. I don't know what that is. Is that a place? Is that a neighborhood? Is that a village? He says, I don't know what it is either, but I think it's where I lost my son. I said, What do you mean you lost your son? And he told me the story of how he sent his 12-year-old boy to this place called Ludhiana, which is where my father is from. And uh, he basically said that he never heard from him again. And I said, um, "What's your son's name?" He told me. I said, "Can you write that down for me?" He says, "No." I said, "Do you have a photograph?" He said, "No." I said, um, uh, "How how long ago was this?" He said, "It was one year ago." And I said, "How old is your son?" He said, "Twelve." I said, "So you've been asking people for one year who get into your rickshaw for help?" And he said, "Yes. That's all I can do because I can't take time off work." So I took his phone number, which was his neighbor's. I went home. I did a Google search. I found Dongri in five seconds, which was something he couldn't access at all. I tried to call the number that he gave me, and it was a wrong number. It didn't exist. And so that was it. This guy was lost. I would never see him again. And that story just kind of stayed with me. And so, you know, eight or nine months later, I decided to start writing it into a film. And now we have this film, Siddharth. Thank you. Why did you name your film Siddharth? Um, it's a. It's a reference. If you know this, you know. If you know the story of Prince Siddhartha, um, one of the meanings of that name, one of the original meanings uh, to me and uh, I guess to others, is to, well, is called is a search for absolute truth. And to me, that's a lot of what this film is about. And, and the truth is obviously relative, um, but the word absolute is very specific. So, in in this situation, when I'm talking about an absolute truth, there's there's two aspects. One is the character is Mahindra is searching for his son, and he's trying to find him. So it's a search. But also, as the movie progresses, he starts to learn about where his place is in this world and in this in the levels of society. And there is an absolute truth to that, unfortunately, which he is only just now becoming aware. What message do you hope people take away from Sitar? Um, you know. My original intention to make this film, and I think with a lot of people, the, the collaborators, the actors, um, and the producers I worked with, our intention was I felt so many conflicting emotions when I met this man, and I was hoping people would feel the same thing after seeing this film. So there is, uh, you know, the obvious sorrow of the tragedy of the situation that this guy doesn't have access to information, um, and then there's the other side of it, which is the resilience that he that he has, that he he keeps, he keeps trying to bring this guy back. To, to bring his son back and in a way he'll never give up in another way he's coming to terms with that maybe he is gone and um, and that resilience to me is a very optimistic thing if, if this guy can handle the the assault that his system just took and move on somehow I think that we can pretty much move on from anything and also along the way the people he meets along this journey are all trying to help him like I'm trying to show a real goodness in, man, in nature. Thank you. At the end of the film, Mahendra goes back to work and Siddharth's friends go back to play, playing cricket. Why did you end the film that way? Um, I mean, I feel that there's something very heartbreaking about when the kids go back to playing cricket because this is their friend. Um, I mean, it'd be like, you're, you know, your friend's playing baseball and then you never come and then they just kind of move on. 
so so there's an inherent understanding in that world um, that individual human life may not have as much value uh, as we deem it to be. You know, the fact that if there's a missing ch child in this environment, you know, the whole community kind of goes up at arms, and it's on the news, and this and that. And in that environment, we have so many people, it's not possible. So there's a, there's a bit of an understanding these children have, which is kind of tragic, I think. Um, but the fact that Mahindra goes back to work, again, as I was saying, it shows that emotionally he has no choice but to move on and focus on another goal, in a way. And I think that's something that, again, that we can learn from here, that sometimes all you need is another goal to move on from, from a real tragedy. Siddharth and his friends are our age, yet their lives are so completely different. If you could change just one thing in their lives, what would you want them to change? I mean, I feel like... Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Do I, can I change the world around them so it affects them, or change their lives specifically? You can change the world around them. Well, and then in that situation, it would just be education. If, I could, if, if you can make it so all these children are educated. Um, and and know you know are completely literate know the value of what it means to be educated and beyond that i mean there's a reality to economics that we are in an environment where we have pretty much have everything we want if we want pizza tonight we're going to get it if we want to go see a movie this afternoon we're going to see it and most people in the world are not they don't have access to that that type of resource um, and so to me, it's almost like, well, why is it that those kids don't have access to it and we do? Why, why were they born in that, to, in that body, if we're going to talk about their soul or their consciousness, and we were born in ours? And, and so to me, it's, you know, I wish, I wish they were given an opportunity. And maybe, maybe it's a question that we have too much. Maybe, you know, it's also a, an evening out, I don't know. But, uh, but education for, kind of for all, so awareness and knowing. I mean, I might ask you guys the same thing. What would you guys change in your lives? Well, why well, do my answer? Come on, come on. You don't okay. get to um, What would you do, Lulu? What would you change? I think I'd change in their lives. I agree with you. Education or just kind of that everybody could have equal opportunities, like you said, and be able to do whatever they want in their life despite their situation at home at the beginning. So what message, if you could change just one thing in our lives, what would you change? 